ਅਸੀਂ ਹਾਰ ਗਏ ਯਾਰ ਇਹ ਸਕੋਰ ਕਾ ਸਕੋਰ ਕਾਰਡ ਤੇ ਲਿਖਿਆ ਕਿ ਆਪਾਂ ਹਾਰ ਗਏ ਨਾ ਪਰ ਸਕੋਰ ਸੇਮ ਸੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਹਨਾ ਸਾਡਾ ਵੀ ਪਰ ਵੀ ਗੋ ਬੋਕ ਆਰ ਯੂ ਫੈਮਿਲੀਅਰ ਵਿਦ ਦਾ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਲੈਂਗੁਏਜ ਥੋੜੀ ਬਹੁਤੀ ਬੋਲ ਪੈਂਦਾ Welcome to another episode of Match Point and uh, we are here in season 2 of GT20 and uh, always with me Dr. Adnan with me and we have brought a very special guest today. So Dr. Adnan who is this uh, guest today? Yeah Dilnishi thank you so much so uh, for all of you GT20 in the full swing season 2 and uh, we are seeing lot of superstars in Toronto. Toronto game on hai but the today star he is from the team whom you love most of all this is the team which was the most wanted team in the current cricket world cup we will also talk about the team and we will ask about the ambitions what happened and what's going to happen next after the these t20 games but this superstar he belongs from new zealand one of the kiwis and one of the proud kiwis and when he was born very special days he was born 6 months after the victory of the Pakistan's prestigious World Cup when Pakistan beat New Zealand the game chasers and they were the winner winner team one of the hall of the fame modern crow rest in peace mark great batch what an enormous enormous run for the New Zealand in that World Cup so this gentleman was born right after that World Cup and since that World Cup New Zealand was in the same rhythm as i told you in the previous games hashtag #92 mein bhi aisa hi hua tha lekin end mein aisa nahi hua but sab cheeze jo hai wo 92 mein aisa hi hua tha anyhow coming to this superstar he has reached the number 1 ranking in the t20s in the bowler rankings in january 2018 and there was a unique moment when the colin munro munro in 2018 at the same time from the new zealand reaching the highest level in the as a batsman and he was reaching at the highest level in the bowlers and this happened only one time before when daniel vitori and brandon mccallum did this back in the 2008 and 2009 he plays from adelaide strikers jamaica tarawas rajasthan royals and currently with us he is playing with a brampton wolves a brand new franchise and the home team of the gt20 season 2 we are having with us inderbir singh whom you know not with this name with the ish sudhi hello ish how are you hello man. lovely to meet you how is the weather how is the canada and uh, just tell us about your feeling of freezing canada um yeah it's been fantastic to be in canada to be playing cricket in canada is very unique um there's not too many countries that that play the game of cricket and uh for it to come to canada and be played in such a fantastic manner uh the biggest thing that i've noticed is the huge punjabi population in brampton uh, uh they've been very quick to claim me as one of their own but i'm more than happy to do that so being playing for the brampton wolves uh may as well be the punjabi wolves <laughs> So well, how do you feel like how how do you think that uh, the league going on so far like season 2 is uh, is at its peak so what's your thinking about it Um so unfortunately I wasn't involved in the first season um but you know speaking to a lot of the players that were they're saying it's a lot bigger and better this year you know obviously the improvements have been made uh, apparently we're at a different ground this year uh, the crowd's been fantastic um the level of cricket is phenomenal i mean the the boundary is very small so uh, the crowd that's coming in is getting their money's worth you know it's been some very entertaining cricket uh, the other day 276 scored in 20 overs by the vancouver knights and i don't think i've seen a t20 uh, where that many runs have been scored um so a lot of superstars playing the game uh, it's been great to be a part of so far and hopefully um we can continue on this streak of two wins so far and and hopefully uh, get through to the semi finals and when uh, isudi is telling uh, telling about the uh, 270 plus so obviously something is gonna hit especially brampton what was that that was gale storm we will come later on in the other episode about the gale storm what happened in the brampton how we saw this but uh, coming back to the uh, isudi uh, he as uh, as he is well aware of the punjabi culture and the <clears throat> rich punjabi phenomena and the brampton is are you familiar with the punjabi language um thodi wati bol pen na um yeah look my, my my punjabi is reasonably uh 
It's not overly fluent, but uh, all my life, you know, I've grown up in New Zealand, but my mum and dad always spoke Punjabi at home. So, uh, yeah, like I'm reasonably confident speaking Punjabi. Like if you made me do it in front of the camera, I'd probably get, be a little bit shy. Um, well, I knew that was coming. <laughs> We just want Ace Sudhi to, uh, Sudhi to say in the Punjabi that why they lost in the World Cup final and what were the feelings? Yeah. I was like, I'm going to score a scorecard. I'm going to score a scorecard. But the score is the same as the other one. Start Davi. But we got more wickets. <laughs> this is the thing. We got more wickets. Um, you know, it's it is hard. It's it's been hard to um, you know digest all of that. The last couple of weeks have actually have we've had some really tough times as well. You know, I found myself in my room feeling quite upset at times. Um, you know, sharing that with your family and friends and your wives and your girlfriends and stuff. I think um, uh, it's it's something that I think will last with us for a long time. Uh, feels like we left a part of us at Lords that day. Um, but it, it's been nice to have a bit of a distraction, come to a new tournament, a uh, completely new scale, you know, a new four-year cycle is starting now. The next World Cup is in India in 2023, so uh, there's things to look forward to, but I don't think, um, I don't think I'll ever forget that day. And uh, with the H. Sudhi having uh, about 39 wickets in as many as ODIs, but unfortunately, H. Sudhi, you were the part of the World Cup, but you were not having a chance of that much playing in this World Cup. What do you believe, uh, as uh, your coach was also in the regret, the game against Pakistan, which put New Zealand on the halt, just like 1992. Hashtag 92 maybe hasa hua tha, just as I was kidding. So, uh, so uh, Gary also told that uh, it was a it was a big mistake in reading the pitch, the spin and the seam. And what do you think if Ish Sudhi would have been there in the game against Pakistan on the edge Beston, and New Zealand would have been where you were seeing after that match if you would have been in that match? Um. You know, cricket's a, a really funny game. You don't know what the wicket's going to do until you've bowled a ball on the wicket, you know. And um, you can't, unfortunately, bowl a ball on the pitch before the game starts. So uh, the coaches and the selectors picked the side that they thought was the best for that surface. And uh, it did behave differently to what they expected it to behave. I'm sure if they knew it was going to spin that much, they would probably go for the second spinner. Um, but in hindsight, it's a great thing, you know. It's easy to look back and say this could have been better or this could have been better or something like that. Um, but it, we, we still took them really far down to the wire. I remember it took a fantastic innings by Baba Razam and Harris Sahail who's been uh, I think under the radar one of the best players in international cricket that I've seen um, play for a long time and the, you know it took them to the wire. They won the game in the last over. Um, it could have easily gone the other way as well if we had one or two tight overs towards the back end but at the end of the day we reached the semi-final. We played a fantastic game against India. We beat them. Uh, yeah it was a great great performance especially by our seam bowlers. Uh, and to get to the final and um, then play another final, which was an over long, uh, you know, I think as a whole, it's hard not to be very proud of the campaign. Um, but it's also uh, with a heavy heart that I say we missed out on something that could have been, you know, a lot more special. And uh, I think at the end of the day, it's the first time in my cricket career I can probably say that we were just a little bit unlucky. And uh, now, just going back to the little bit of childhood of uh, Ish. Ish, just tell us that you were uh, moving to the New Zealand when your dad brought you from the Punjab, Lodhiana, when you were only four years old. At that time, your early days with the Papa Toto. Uh, so what about those schools, high schools, your games over there? And then, have you ever thought, uh, because I have heard that in your school days, you were eyeing towards the 2019 World Cup. And I have heard it that Aish Sudhi was thinking that this will be the biggest achievement if I hit the target 2019, if I become the part of the Kiwis. Yeah, so um, I mean, growing up in New Zealand, uh, first I was born in Punjab. I moved there when I was four years old, like you said. Um, and it's funny because like we're, we're in a really uh, heavy Indian populated part of Canada at the moment. It's very, very populated. A lot of Punjabis in Brampton. Man, if you come to my hometown of Papatoitoi, you'll feel exactly the same. You know, so, so uh, they say the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. But uh, my father kind of, you know, found a place for us to settle in Papatoi and um, for whatever reason it was a very high Punjabi population and it keeps growing to this day. So um, where I am, I do identify as a Kiwi. Um, I've been really fortunate not to lose the culture of being a Punjabi because I've had it around me for, you know, majority of my life. Um, so that, that was fantastic. And when I was younger in school and I, you know, 
started falling in love with the game of cricket. Uh, a lot of people said, you know, leg spinners start maturing in their, you know, late 20s and early 30s. And I thought, okay, cool. So there's a fantastic tournament in 2019 Cricket World Cup. I would love to debut for New Zealand uh, in that tournament. So uh, ever since I started playing the game, it was a huge goal of mine to be able to play in the 2019 World Cup. Although I didn't get a hell of a lot of game time, uh, it was a massive goal for me to tick off. And uh, leading up to that beforehand, I had played so much for New Zealand already that um, it was something that I never expected um, of myself really so it kind of feels a little bit like my career is only starting now um, in terms of how I pictured it happening um, but I'm very very proud uh, to be what, first and foremost a New Zealander uh, and to represent my country uh, playing cricket the game that I love and also being a uh, you know, a Punjabi man. Now, I'm a Punjabi that grew up in New Zealand and I represent New Zealand. Um, and, you know, that for me is very special. And from Australia, Osman Khaja was the first one in the history of Australian cricket in the 142 years history uh, when an Asian man entering to the Australian side. And after the Deepak Patel, now we saw Aish uh, Sudhi, one of the proud members from the South Asian community, being the proud part of the Kiwi, and he says himself a proud Kiwi. But Aish, I uh, just if I uh, explore uh, back the history of the Aish Sudhi, I see what was the turning point in your career. Was it like this when you were not blessing? in disguise when you were not picked for the Bangladesh in the test games and then you were having a call from the Adelaide strikers to replace the Chris Jordan and then you took the six wickets and that is the second best bowling after Latish Milanga. How you will if uh, you will ignite the memories of that game? Yeah look um you know as a as a young cricket player at that time you know uh, I was probably only 22 23 years old um, or maybe 24 I can't actually remember but uh, it was a tough time for me. I got I dropped from the national side. I uh, probably wasn't uh, overly confident um, to have the chance to go to Adelaide Strikers and for New Zealand cricket to support that decision, um, which meant I would miss a few games of, of cricket for Northern Districts back home and for New Zealand. So they supported that. They were really fantastic, allowed me to go. Um, and Jason Gillespie was the coach uh, of the Adelaide Strikers and he filled me with a huge amount of confidence, uh, gave me the freedom to play my game, uh, you know, as best as I possibly could. And, uh, you know, thankfully we were, we had a fantastic score on the board and the pitch started spinning a little bit and I had some really nice rhythm. Uh, getting six for 11 in a competition other than, you know, somewhere in New Zealand gave me a huge amount of confidence and I went back to New Zealand then. Uh, went back into the New Zealand side and put on some good performances for New Zealand and uh, I think it was a great lesson as well because the biggest thing you're searching for as a player, uh, you know, when you've got enough skills to play international cricket is really just confidence. Uh, so, uh, right now on A Sudhi and we will see how he can survive with over rapid fire and also we will do straight, straight drive. drive. Yeah. So, stay tuned. Welcome back to Match Point and uh, we're going to play straight drive with Ish. So, are you ready right now? Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, pretty much easier questions, not that much difficult. What's your, uh, who's your favorite singer? Uh, Celine Dion. Oh, okay. Favorite movie? Uh, the Notebook. Okay. Favorite spot in America and Canada? Uh, so far, my favorite spot is the Keg Restaurant. Okay. Favorite ground? Brampton CCCA. What else? <laughs> right. Best and favorite moment in your career? Uh, test match debut. Okay. So, favorite food? Uh, chole Bhature. Oh, great. Okay. So, I think uh, the Dr. Nan is a very good cook. He's going he gonna, to he gonna make it for you. Yes, please. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Favorite uh, destination holiday? Uh, I would love to go to Holland. Okay. Your best habit? Um, I think I'm quite patient. Your worst one? Uh, I think I'm always hungry. <laughs> okay, when you feel complete, who's bowling at the other end? When you feel complete? Oh, to be fair, the other day bowling with Shahid Afridi um, in tandem was a huge, huge part of why. Very special in my career. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, so quickly we have over to you. To the next one. This is a rapid fire, and in the rapid fire, we will try to clean bowl each. So the best batsman you have ever faced, uh, Colin Munro. Colin <laughs> Munro. Best bowler you have ever faced, uh, Mitchell Stark. Mitchell Stark. Mitchie. Worst batsman you have ever faced, uh, 
Uh, Chris Martin. Mm. Worst bowler you have ever faced? Colin Munro. Imran Khan, Kapil Dev, Richard Headley, Ian Botham. What is the pick of Ishu? Oh, Richard Headley. Got to go with Richard Headley. New Zealand heart. If you have to face Michael Holding, Andy Roberts, Jewel Gardner, Malcolm Marshall, whom you will avoid? I don't think I'm laying a single bat on Joel Garner. He bounced the ball too high. If you would not have a cricketer, I think I'd be a teacher. Your best roommate? Uh, my best roommate is Mitchell Sandner. Your worst roommate in the Kiwi side? Scott Kugeline. Your favourite captain? Uh, favourite captain is Kane Williamson. Favourite Indian captain? Oh, 100% Mohammad Azaruddin. He's a flex. And the best Pakistani favourite captain? Uh, I'm not sure if he captained, but my favourite player, not just in Pakistan, but of all time, is Mohammad Yusuf. Mohammad Yusuf. Uh, if I give you a chance to face Shoaib Akhtar or a Brett Lee, whom you will avoid? Do I have to face them? <laughs> okay. Uh, I think maybe Brett Lee because Shoaib Akhtar was massive, so he looked a bit scarier. Yeah. Okay. Brett Lee and Shoaib Akhtar, if both are bowling in, in the drafting, whom you will pick for your team? Oh, Shoaib Akhtar. Brian Lara or Sachin Tendulkar, ODI drafting. Brian Lara. David Gover, Javed Miyadad, Sunil Gawaskar, test match drafting. Sunil Gawaskar. AB de Villiers or Corey Anderson, T20 drafting. Corey Anderson. <laughs> when New Zealand will win the World Cup? 2023. <laughs> when South Africa will not choke in the semi-finals? Oh, maybe 2023 as well. When Pakistan will beat India in a World Cup game? 2038. <laughs> so, the, from the match point, Ish Sudhi and we were having the player. Lot of fans, you would have been enjoying. It was a high demand that when Ish Sudhi will be in the match point. So, finally, he is on the match point. Keep watching us officially on the gt20.ca on our mobile app. And we will be with our next superstar. Who knows from which team? But we will be right back to you. Keep watching Match Point. Till then, take care and bye bye.